Hi everyone, my name is Lisa. I'm an instructor here in Evolve Yoga and Fitness. I'm going to take you through a short restorative sequence. It helps to calm the fluctuations of the mind or generally make any time that you're feeling anxiety or worry a little bit better. It's great for the evening before sleep or any time throughout the day. So first, we will begin in lotus pose, just resting, sitting up tall on our spine. Let's bring our hands to heart center. Bow our heads gently and close our eyes as we begin to set an intention for our practice. The intention that I'm focusing on is may I be well, may I be safe, and may I be at peace. Let's take five breaths on this intention. Inhaling in through the nose, and an open mouth exhale out through the mouth. Four more cleansing breaths in through the nose, and out through the mouth. Breath in through the nose. Open mouth, HA, exhale. Pull the shoulders away from the ears and lift up the chin. Flutter open the eyes. And just set your gaze forward. Take one final breath in. Cleansing, exhale. Let's go ahead and remove our blankets from our mat, if you have blankets. If not, perfect, your mat will do just fine. We're gonna come into a tabletop. So resting our fingertips down, bring our, bringing our body into a little bit of a square. Your shoulders will be over your wrists and your hips will be over your knees. I have a mirror to use as my guide if you have one at home. It's a good thing to use also. And once we grip our fingertips down, rest the tops of our, our feet on our mat, we're going to inhale as we drop our belly down, raise our eyes up, exhale, arch our back and drop our head. Continue those cleansing breaths. Inhale and exhale. This is cat cow. We will do about 10 rounds of cat cow. You can go as fast or as slow as you like. sure that you're really arching the spine. Extending the belly. Tabletop, I'd like you just to reset. So gently pick up each palm, pick up each knee. Flip over the right hand so that the back of the hand is on your mat. And stretch through the forearm. 
Release that hand and go over to the left side. Stretch through the forearm. Let's bring our fingertips now to the outward edges of our mat and just gently rock side to side so that you feel a stretch through your forearms. And now just go a little bit deeper. Turn those fingertips all the way around so that they're facing your knees and gently pull back towards the hips. Feel a nice stretch from the wrist right up to the forearm. Just gently though. And then release the fingertips forward. Here I like to squeeze the hands, fists a little bit, make fists. And do a few wrist circles as well. Our next pose, we're going to do something called thread the needle. So I'd like you to place your right hand into the center of your mat. We're going to lift our left arm up to the ceiling and let our gaze follow those fingertips. After we're there, we're going to thread under that right arm so that we're coming down and resting on our left shoulder and our left temple and you're going to walk the right fingertips above your body. And we'll stay in this pose for a minute or two. So just rest, push back into the hips. We will come out of this pose the same way that we came in. Take the left arm reach up towards the sky and come back to a tabletop or a neutral spine. We'll then place our left hand in the center of our mat, reach up with our right fingertips, let your gaze follow them, and then thread underneath. Coming all the way down to that right shoulder, the right temple, and walk the left arm above the body. And rest here for a minute.
and again we'll come out of the pose the same way. Lifting the right fingertips up and then coming back to a neutral spine. So resetting the hands, resetting the knees. Maybe you'd like to go into another wrist stretch here. Like to take each foot out one at a time, push back through the heel as you stretch through the entire leg. Left leg also. And with those left toes extended, go ahead and bring the right out to meet them. So you're in a high plank. And very slowly lift up from the hips. So that you're in downward dog. You're going to push back through the heels. Make sure that your wrist creases are facing forward. And you have a comfortable stance. Once there, lift the right leg up. Bring the knee down in front of the body with the shin as parallel as possible to the front of your mat. And sit up nice and tall here for a minute. We're going into a pigeon pose. Once there, and you know that your hips are square, you can use a block and place it under the right glute so that if you need a little support. But once you're there, you can walk all the way down into a sleeping pigeon pose. If it's in your practice, you can bring your chest all the way down. But always feel free to stay on your forearms or use any props that you have, any blocks, just so that you feel comfortable. We've stretched our shoulders, now we move on to our hips. Just rest here for a minute or two, coming back to that intention that you set. Tips down, curl under the left toes, and again, coming out of the pose the same way that we came in, we lift up the right leg, stretch, and back into downward dog. We're going to stay in downward dog for three breaths. Inhale, open up, exhale. Again, you can place a block under the glute, walk all the way down if it's in your practice. Or simply rest on your forearms and come back to that peaceful feeling.
release our hands to our mat. We're going to walk our chest up, curl under the right toes, and lift the left leg out for a stretch. Release it back down to the mat. Push back into downward dog. And just hang out here for three or four breaths. your knees down into your mat. Our next pose will require a little bit of setup. I have props here that I use that we use in the studio, but at home you can use a towel or a blanket or an extra mat, whatever works best for you. I will be using my bolster. <clears throat> go into a supported child's pose. And we do this by getting very close for a bolster. And again, you could use a blanket, you could use a pillow, you could use a mat with a towel over it. And I'll do this from two angles so that you can see. But we bring our knees the width of our mat. We sit up nice and tall all the way through the crown of our head. And then we simply walk out over our bolster and release. We place our palms so that they're face up. Accepting any good energy. And I'm just going to switch to this side so that you can see. And knees, the width, very close to the bolster, sitting up nice and tall through the crown of my head and walking out over the bolster. We will stay here for one minute, and then we will switch to the opposite cheek. And I will cue you when we are there. Inhale, plant your hands down. Exhale, 
walk yourself out of child's pose. We'll do one last pose before we go into Shavasana. <clears throat> Again, we will use a prop. So I like to use a bolster and a block. You can use a pillow, a blanket, a roll-up mat. If you have a bolster open, that's great. We bring the base of our spine to the end of that bolster or that prop, and then we gently roll out. We stretch our legs forward. We can bring them into butterfly or badakonasana. We bring our hands out to our side. This is just an easy chest opener. If you want to stretch your legs out, you can place a blanket or a towel underneath them for knee support or lower back support. But once you're here, just let your shoulders separate on that prop. Bring the hands out to the sides, palms up, receiving any energy. Chest openers can sometimes <clears throat> make you feel a little short of breath. So just breathe through that and make yourself very vulnerable in this position. But just breathe through it. Inhale here. 
hold that breath and then exhale, release, put all the air out. Stretching the arms above the body and then releasing the hands to the side. This is our final resting pose, Shavasana. all the way here. Let the breath go shallow. Thank you. 